Hello everybody, Scott Roberts here with Jerry Hubble and uh, we didn't have our normal uh, cool video that we have normally, but um, I downloaded this really good one uh, for, about Mars, but for some reason it wouldn't play and so I'll have to figure that out next time. But um, we, got, uh, really like you, I guess. we got a lot to do today. We have, we're getting ready for Virtual Star Party 3 and um, uh, we are... Um, uh, you know, got to get everything all set up. Jer Jerry, you've, apparently you're having like some issues with uh, MSRO. What's happening out there? Yeah, we've over the last uh, few days, we've had issues with the router, the gateway to the Internet uh, that we have. And uh, Dr. Myron Masuda, the observatories at his locations, at his home. So on this, this weekend, we replaced the router. Uh, cable modem and it and it worked fine mm -hmm. for a couple of days and then all of a sudden it's not doing it. Huh. It's uh it start decided to not allow me to get on it re remotely right now. So I was there today looking at a couple things. I had to install a new filter wheel. I see. Our other one was uh failed, but uh, so I'm still working on it. Hopefully maybe this evening I'll have it corrected and I'll be able to get on. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see uh, something with that router. We'll have you on anyways, you know. I mean, astronomy doesn't doesn't start and stop with telescopes, although it's cool to have them. <laughs> yeah, it's nice when they're available. It's and nice they when work. they're working. <laughs> That's true, but sometimes they don't. And uh, But uh, we work through the problems and we get it all figured out. Um we, uh, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about Virtual Star Party 3. Uh, you know, of course, we, we're going to have David Levy on. This is a Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere Star Party and a, and a European one, too, because we're going to have uh, Gary Palmer on from the UK. He's, he's decided to uh, stay up late enough to uh, be with us or, or get up early enough. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be. He's what, seven hours ahead of us or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, and then we got, uh, Cesar Brollo, who's watching the show right now. Um, he's going to be set up, uh, trying to do astrophotography down in Argentina. Uh, Rodrigo Zaleda is going to be on in Chile, but he says he's clouded out. So he'll be showing us probably astrophotography that he's done from down there and stuff. So that'll be cool. Uh, you know, and, uh. Uh, Maybe I'll David, show some of the, David uh, Ng is going to be with us too um, and he said worldwide star party first ever the first ever explore scientific worldwide star party how's that so it's not the first world, worldwide uh, and and by far not the largest the biggest one ever was probably run by uh, Mike Simmons during the International Year of Astronomy it was um, it was, uh, I think it was called 100 Hours of Astronomy or something like that. But what happened was, is it was a star party that started at one, you know, longitude line and went completely around the world. And like over a million people participated in this star party. So, so yeah, Dave says it's very cloudy in Temecula right now. So we'll have to see. It's easy to get clouded out, and we spread our risk by having people all over the globe set up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and then David Levy is going to be on with us, and I don't know, drum roll. I'm not sure if I'm going to get this or not, but let's see. Let's see. I am looking for a poem. Nope, no poem yet, so I can't guarantee, no but poem. we may be getting a poem from uh, Dr. Story Musgrave, an astronaut. He oh, writes poetry. Awesome. We've been going back and forth talking about it, and uh, I asked him, what, does he want to come on live? And he says he doesn't do virtual. So I said, okay, I respect that. So anyways. I got to, I got to meet uh, 
Dr. Story Musgrave back in 2013 at, in Arizona. Right. He's Remember we did the video? Yeah. He's... Remember we did the interview there and right. I got to talk to him. Yeah. I and did. it was a cool story because I, he, you know, he repaired the Hubble Space Telescope. Right. Of course. Right. So I walked up to him and introduced myself. I said, my, my name is Jerry Hubble. And he, <laughs> he, he kind of paused. He says, I know Mr. Hubble. <laughs> so that was kind of cool you know yeah um uh, no he is one of the nicest guys i mean when he's there live somewhere i mean he's the most approachable guy you know and you think about what that man's done with I mean, he's got a i think he does uh brain surgery and he knows all these languages and he has all these phds you know and uh yeah. he's well in his 80s and he is still going full force, you know, probably working on his next PhD right now. So, uh, you know, he has kind of like the energy of a, of a 20 year old, um, yeah. just, a, a really amazing man. So, um, so, uh, we may be, uh, live streaming tonight on the clear sky network. Uh, that's a, that's a Twitch channel. Um, and so we're, we're still trying to put that together right now. So there's like a lot of last minute pieces coming together. But if any of you uh, that are listening to the show just want to be on uh, as a guest for like, a, you know, a five minute uh, get up and talk about uh, what you love about astronomy or show some of your astro photos or to say a poem or or, you know, if you got your scope hooked up and there's an image of, you know, Jupiter or Saturn th going through it or whatever. And you want uh, you want to show the world uh, what you're doing? Uh, you can go on to explorescientific.com uh, slash forward slash events, and it's going to take you to a page that will show you the virtual star party, which you can buy a ticket for zero dollars. You buy the ticket, and this do apparently doesn't work on mobile phones, but um, it works from a laptop or a desktop. And it will deliver to you in your email a PDF file. And that PDF file you download and it will give you uh, login credentials to get into our waiting room where Kent Martz will be waiting for you uh, and he'll do sound checks and video checks with you and you know, make sure that you're uh, you know, uh, uh, going to talk about astronomy or set up for astronomy and not selling snake what was oil, that? right? So, what was that page again? I can show it on yeah. the screen. If it you want. is, yeah, show it on the screen. It's explorescientific.com forward slash events. Events. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me. Uh... Stephen Molly, also from Ontario Telescopes, is going to be on with us. He's watching the show. And uh... All right, here <laughs> it is. Mike Wiesner says, I have the energy of a teenager. <laughs> no, I have the brain of a teenager. All, All right. right. You see it on the, okay, yeah. there it is. So it's zero dollars. And what you do is you just hit the add to cart button. Okay. And you check out. All right. Not literally, I mean, not, you know, you don't want to say check out to an old guy like me, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> You want to um, go ahead and do that. We have rules, so I went down and went ahead to put down the legal stuff. Uh, the, what made me think a lot of the legal stuff is that uh, someone in Scotland, I think, uh, uh, reached out to me uh, in, in email and said that his young daughter would like to come on. And I thought, let me think about that, how, you know, uh, you know, there's it gets sensitive when you have someone that's under 18 years old uh, being on a live broadcast and that kind of thing. So I made one of the rules I made is that you have to, you know, no profanity, no adult themes, no political religious themes. This is astronomy, you know, no selling or self-promotion, you know, unless we agree to it, you know. So, um, right. Uh, and uh, I just put down a bunch of all the rules I could think of. <laughs> Because I've yeah. been doing this kind of star party stuff for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, but if it's a kid, uh, they need to come on with their legal guardian or parent, you know. So um, I think that's that's appropriate. <laughs> so, Right. 
Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. That's uh, so. Astro Beer is telling us we need to get 50 followers on Twitch to get affiliate status. Then you get subscribe button, and I think emote as well. Yeah. All right. So if you're listening out there, follow us on Twitch so we can get 50 followers. <laughs> That's a that's a bare bones. That's the bare bones. No, I don't no. think we have that many followers. You know? no. We're just mm-hmm. starting on Twitch, but uh, Twitch is a cool channel. You know, I mean, and, and it works. Uh, the video on it works really well, so that's that's nice. You know. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Um, Gary Palmer says it's aliens, not one of you to find their home planet. Yeah. Yeah. They're out there. I know it. So, um, so what's next, uh, Jerry? Let me uh, let me read an article real quick. We got some news, astronomy news. Um, the last time you used your news voice, that was really cool. Yeah, I'll see how I'll see how it goes. Okay. I think I should be able to read this pretty good. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Okay. And at first, astronomers spotted a space rock turning into a comet. The process won't be complete until 2063. I don't know how they know that. Yeah. Right. How do they know that? <laughs> <laughs> an egg's gonna hatch right that's right mm-hmm. right so that's that's a generic comet drawing right. picture yeah the uh lisa grossman wrote this article uh it's science news independent journalism uh <laughs> like the mythical half human half horse creatures centaurs in the solar system are hybrids between asteroids and comets now astronomers have caught one morphing from one type of space rock to the other potentially giving scientists an unprecedented chance to watch a comet form in real time in the decades to come. That's that's kind of interesting because I thought comets were left over from billions of years ago. Um, we have an opportunity here to see the birth of a comet as it starts to become active, says planetary scientist Kat Volk of the University of Arizona in Tucson. Hmm. The object called P2019 LD2 was discovered by the Atlas Telescope in Hawaii in May. Its orbit suggests that it's a centaur, a class of rocky and icy objects with unstable orbits. Because of that mixed composition and potential to move around the solar system, astronomers have long suspected that centaurs are a missing link between small icy bodies in the Kuiper belt beyond Neptune and comets that regularly visit the inner solar system. Hmm. These these short-period comets, which are thought to originate from icy objects in the Kuiper Belt, orbit the sun once a decade or so, and maybe repeat appearances, uh, and make repeat appearances in Earth's skies. Long-period comets like Halley's Comet, which visits the inner solar system once a century, probably originate even further from the sun in the Oort cloud. So that's uh, that's kind of interesting. Right. I didn't realize that they could shift orbit and then turn from rocky to icy, and then maybe back to rocky. I guess. Hmm. And then back to Bullwinkle. Yeah. And then back to Bullwinkle, right? <laughs> Bullwinkle and Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! So. So that's uh. So, I don't know if you want to post a link to this article in the. Um, sure. In the thing. Sure. I'll post that. Let's see. Copy. So how was my news voice? Was that good? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. You, you I think you've got a career. <laughs> yeah, I've got a face for radio. A face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing fine. You're doing fine. So um, we were also talking about, uh, I guess it was a guy in customer service that was having issues with his IXOS 100 and you mentioned how he's kind of hopping around trying this and trying that and you know just not being successful at all and um, uh, you know it hasn't you know he's not really kind of following a, a methodical process of troubleshooting you know which is kind of what you have to do you know it's kind of like uh, I think you're muted Jerry yeah yeah. I can hear him lips. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that, uh, yeah, if if you don't follow a methodical process from one end of the connection to the other, it's kind of difficult to to just jump around and expect it to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, 
that's one of the things we try to do as a company is is, is try to set our our uh, customers' expectations on what they'll get uh, in their out of the box experience. We try to set them up for success, and uh, but it doesn't always work that way. So. Um, in this regard, we have to start at the beginning and at the connection level. And the first, uh, the first part that uh, Tyler's been working with him is to get his, um, to be able to talk uh, with the wireless. Okay, I, I think he was able to get on Explore Stars on the wireless, and he was, and he wanted to go to the wired connection, and that's when it became an issue. I think. Hmm. So he thinks he got on the configuration manager and sw- swapped it over to the serial port. Yeah, and I'm gonna bring up the uh, right now. I've got my IXOS 100 set up on the serial port. Um, can you see that? Yeah, hold on. There it is. All right. All right. So the first thing you have to do is plug it in, and and the actually the first thing he ran into is he plugged it in to his machine, and it didn't. Typically, Windows gives you a little tone when it connects to the USB port. Yeah. It says that's that's the plug-and-play thing, that it automatically recognizes it and pops it up. But in this case, this uh, this customer didn't have the driver. Uh, apparently, he doesn't have the FTDI driver. And so this is, the, this is the first place I told Tyler to... I sent him this link... Uh, to go to, and it's actually the link to this, I don't know if you can see right here where I'm, my cursor is. It's the setup executable. Okay. For the Windows platform. Yeah, we see it. Okay. So I sent that link to Tyler, and hopefully he'll be able to get that. So that's the first thing you want to do. And it, it, it doesn't hurt to go get the latest driver anyway on your Windows platform to do that. That's always a good thing um, to do. Wolfgang wants to know uh, if there's already some sort of uh, PDF file that people can look at for troubleshooting. Uh, we don't. Well, we've got our manual, our user manual, that talks through the connection information. Uh, not really like. It's not a step troubleshooting. One, do guide. this. Step two, do that. You know, um, there's. To be very honest, Wolfgang, there's so many configurations that could be set up. Uh, for um, the system, I guess there's some basic ones where we can go. Okay, if you have a iPad and you're using Explore Stars, do this, this, and this. Okay, um, I do. You know, uh-huh. and that, those are things that uh, that could be uh, produced from our customer service team. That's not I a bad idea. I do have a diagram that shows all the different connection types. It's like a graphical, like a. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, one of those graphical infogram, yeah. infographics. Yeah, infographic. That shows the different ways you can connect the PMC8 up to your either your uh, tablet or your uh, PC using ASCOM or wireless or wired. I've got an infographic that kind of shows that. You want to show that or is that handy? Uh, yeah, let me see if I can find it here. Okay. Um. Uh, let's see here. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. I'm looking at images that, um, a new image that uh, Astro Beard, Richard Grace took uh, with the ED80. I'm going to let him oh. put that on the uh, star party tonight. So you're going to want to see that. Mm-hmm. Boil it. It's nice. And he sent me this really kind of, I'm going to have to show this card if I can. Let's see. Hmm. You want me to stop sharing my desktop for a minute while you go show that or do something? Let me download this first. 
Okay. It is real exciting seeing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Scrolling through my graphics. There's probably, well, yeah, secret, I mean, there's probably some secret drawings there and are, information there here. There are. Absolutely. There's some secret squirrel stuff in here that. Uh, squirrel, right? I don't know. It's been a while since I created that stuff, so I don't know if it's in this pictures folder or if it's somewhere else. There's there's a picture of Mike a picture uh, of Mike Reynolds. Our existing scene here. Let's try this. Overlay. Uh, new image overlay. Mm -hmm. You gotta check this out. This is really cute. This was done by Richard Grace's mom, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, start party on, dude. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's really cool. So, very nice. Thanks for sharing that, Richard. I meant to share it yesterday, but uh, but there you go. This might be it. Let's see what okay. pops up here. All right. Is it popping up? It's not even popping up. Golly. White hole. What it looks like inside of a white hole. Cheat sheet. <laughs> Wolfgang says some kind of checklist. <laughs> <laughs> oh but it can help you also buy you a oh. customer. Oh, here we go. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. You want to show it full screen yep, maybe? I am. People... Okay, I didn't. Yeah. That's a infographic that I kind of made up that gives you a checklist type of thing to look at what you can do. Uh, uh, it's 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 not a full procedure or anything. It just gives you some information about the connections. Right. And all the possibilities, I guess. Right. It doesn't really show the configuration manager either. It needs to be updated. So. Yeah. You'll do that in your spare time. Yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. I'll continue to <laughs> say I'm going to do something and then put it off because mm -hmm. I got I got working priorities. Right. The uh, so the first thing in this troubleshooting guide is to is to start from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, on the the mount comes configured wirelessly. All right. Let me get out of here. And it's. That's the first thing right out of the box. And so you have your SSID, you connect your network, your machine up to the network. It uses a UDP protocol, and then the default network settings are good. Okay. So once you do that, and, and you can get that to come up, and this assumes you've installed Explore Stars and, and you've got the database loaded already. Uh, once, so that's, that's really the first thing you'll do. And then you'll connect up to your SSID and if you cross your fingers, you won't have a please wait message on the Windows platform, and, and you'll see the connection come up on your other tablets if you're using Android or iOS or iPad OS tablet. Right. Uh, that's the first thing. You want to see that work right out of the box. And then if you don't, then you give us a call or you go to the forum and ask, hey, this is what I'm doing. Now... To go further, <clears throat> you want to you want to go to Configuration Manager and download the Configuration Manager, which is available on our website, yeah. of course, right. like everything else. Um, let me let me go to that real quick. So if you go to Support, PMC8 Software and Downloads. Okay. You'll see the down the Explore Stars app at the very top to download that, and that goes to the App Store, whatever app, whatever platform you're going to be at downloading it on. And then, uh, and then you'll have the um, you'll go to the, let's say you're going to the Android. All right. You can go there. You can either download the app database directly here and install it according to these instructions that are here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or, or, or you can go back and bypass that and download the 
PMC8 Configuration Manager. Okay. Which is what we suggest you do. Right. Okay. And that, the Configuration Manager, has a tool in there. It's a tab for Explore Stars. Okay. That you can download the database either onto the Windows directory, which is the Pictures directory, or on Android, you have to install it on an SD card. That's one of the requirements for an Android tablet is that you have an SD card slot. Micro SD slot is more than likely what you have, and then you have an SD card to put the database on. And so you'll do it that way. Now, Chox um, is asking, did you see my videos on connecting it? Is that the customer that was having Chox problems? Da? No, I don't think Oh, so. um, does he have a link for it? Yeah, Chuck, you want to share the link on the... Is it on the forum? Has he shared it on the forum? I We're asking now. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Wolfgang says, does it already build the folder? Question mark, question mark. Yeah, the latest... the the we, we corrected that problem with the 105 version, which is in beta right now. You can download it. It's not linked on our website. It's on the forum. Um, <laughs> Dave Ng says, good troubleshooting is key. I used to serve as PCs at Rocketdyne, and an actual rocket scientist refused to go through the steps for a dead monitor. I found the cable was not plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty wild. People, uh, people have specific ideas about oh, yeah. troubleshooting. I, you know, I can't tell you how many times that I've been on with customers for all kinds of things. When I was working at OPT or with all those years at Meet Instruments and now here, of course, star parties, all kinds of stuff. And you, you're talking to really, I mean, for the most part, really brilliant people. And they get so locked in on the way they think this should work, you know? And, uh, and you'll say, oh, no, no. All you got to do is turn this knob or, you know, do this or do that. It's something usually pretty simple. And then, you know, they're going, well, it shouldn't work that way. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. So, you know, I, you know, you got to keep an open mind. This is the other part. You got to keep an open mind when you're troubleshooting on how, how something would work, you know? So, Chuck right. says that, yes, it's on the forum. Okay. Mm hmm. You want to share the link on that, Chox? Does he? Uh, is it on the main group? I'm asking to find it and yeah, share the yeah. link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important to, to like like Scott said to keep an open mind when you're troubleshooting, and you don't want to throw away any little information that you may think is just whatever that doesn't matter, but it could matter. If you run across something that's an indication of something that looks weird, but you just toss it, yeah. you don't, you don't uh, believe it, or you just say that's that doesn't matter. That that will matter later on, right? <laughs> when you're still frustrated, and then you remember that thing came up, you said, "Oh, that's why I'm getting this." That's why I'm getting <laughs> this. All right, so yeah, so here's mm -hmm. here's uh, the PMC8 Wi-Fi thing from Chox. Okay. And um, let's see. You I'm just resharing it, it Chalk, so it goes on all the other streams here. And then uh, Poth Hub. You had good volume on. There we go. And this is Poth Hub. This is cool, Chalk. Thanks, man. And what else? And then this last one, Nina, Nina sequence. <laughs> I don't know why we do this, but anytime we get almost everybody that does any kind of live streaming video or whatever, we always start off by saying, hi guys. <laughs> and that is such a California thing, you know, <laughs> you call yeah. everybody a guy, you know, that's right. It's, Male, female, I, dog, I don't think it's cat. Just it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Any sentient being becomes a guy, you know? So, 
This yeah, is the say, hello human. Yeah, I do it all the time. Hello human. Yeah. <laughs> Brad Blake says there's a forum. <laughs> yes, Brad, there's a forum here. If you're not familiar with it, we'll give. I'm going to give it to you. Groups.io. And here we go. So I guess the key thing is to start at the beginning and to work your way up to more difficult configurations is what it comes down to. Yeah. When you're troubleshooting a problem, make sure at least verify that something is working because it, the lower level stuff has to be working before the higher level stuff will work. Yeah. There's no sense in jumping to the to the uh, end of the to the end of the book and expecting it to start up, you know. Mhm. That's that's called one up uh, that's called all up testing. And NASA did that with the Saturn V and they were successful. All up testing. Right. Cuz that's that's when you do component level testing. And then you don't integrate one piece at a time and test. You basically put it all together and hope for the best. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, what's the what was the quote, you know, a million parts all bid on by the lowest bidder. Lowest bidder, right? Lowest bidder. <laughs> you know, this is effectively a bomb that you're sitting on. Right. It takes one. One part. One part to blow the thing up. And that's what happened in Apollo 13. Yeah. That little uh, regulator, the thermal regulator for the cryostir heater thing. This wasn't a good part, I guess, huh? I, well, it was tested previously, but it was fail, but it failed, and they didn't detect it, I think, and or it, or it was, I don't know if it was tested, but it was they had done something with it and mm -hmm. it had failed in some way where when they turned it on again it it blew up wow yeah yeah it's dangerous when things go wrong up there well jerry did you come up with a good question so that we can give this uh now this is not a first <laughs> guys okay <laughs> yeah let me uh all right so I, I said there was a version of the, the man bag. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to go to the uh, forum to find this. I said there was a version of the configuration manager, a beta version, but um, I was wrong. What is the actual beta version that's available on the main group files section? Um, that's the hint where it is. Now you may have to hunt around further. But there's a there's a beta version of the configuration manager that I posted in July, um, and so tell me the version that's posted and what the date I posted it. And I I actually uh, I don't know if you saw it on the screen or not. I actually went through it and looked at it. But tell me that <laughs> information. What do we got for him? What do we got for him? Scott? What do we got for him, Johnny? We got a uh, we got an Explore Scientific uh, ten year tenth year anniversary gift. This was actually given out to VIPs at our tenth anniversary party, and uh, it's got a USB uh, power outlet for your car. It's got a uh, little swivel um, uh, USB thing here. Let's. That's a uh, hard, that's a uh, yeah, drive. Not swivel, it's just like a little, it's a thumb oh, it's drive. magnetic. It's a magnetic thumb drive with a little clip for your keys. That's kind of cool. Maybe I'll keep it. Um, it's got a, uh, <laughs> a little uh, boom box um, speaker, you know. Yeah, my, my son likes that thing a lot. Yeah. He, I was, I was uh, fortunate enough to be there at the celebration and I was one of the VIPs, I guess, to get one of those. Right, yeah. Suppose, you know, if you were lost out there in the woods, you could somehow communicate. Um, and then you got power. You got a power stick here. Of course, all this stuff has got the Explore Scientific 10th Anniversary Special logo. So it's very cool. Very cool. And uh, it came with instructions and a, a little... Explore Scientific 10th Anniversary D Clip. Okay, so there you go. All oh, yeah. handsomely packaged. 
in its beautiful case with the That's probably like a sixty dollar value or uh, something, isn't it? Hundreds of dollars in value. Hundreds of dollars. <laughs> Imagine the millions of dollars that technology that it took to actually develop the fabric right. and the zipper and all that stuff, you know. And the decades of work for the computer systems that's in there and it goes all the way else. back to the beginning of, of mankind, you know, that's the invention right. of the wheel, yep. the discovery of fire, all that stuff, you know. And we've got uh, you know, beautiful uh, metal stamp. It says tenth uh, anniversary here. So yeah. It's all that technology it's trillions, from day Tim. one. <laughs> trillions. <laughs> Yeah, trillions of dollars in technology right there. When you know you uh, you know compensate for today's dollars. So <laughs> so okay. So we got some answers. Okay, Tim Myers says one point zero point four July tenth. Yep, that's it. That's it. Yep. And Nico also said one point zero point four can be. But he didn't get the date. Yikes. Yeah. All right. So, Tim. That's why I added the date because I knew it was going to be fairly quick. So, I figured there'd be two pieces of information they had to get. Yeah. And so, you know, this is the way that Spock celebrates when somebody wins something. Yep. Yep. Hurrah. And I believe it's pronounced <laughs> Tally Ho. Tally Ho. Tally Ho. Yep, 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 hurrah. That's awesome. <laughs> <It's> awesome. <laughs> okay, guys. That is so awesome. <laughs> what I don't know why that's so awesome. All right, so, uh, Tim. Does that come with a booster seat? <laughs> so, Tim, you got to send your email. Send an email, not your email. Send a email to kent at explorescientific.com. And uh, he will rush out this uh, this beautiful thing to you. So, anyhow, really appreciate um, everybody's participation today, and uh, really want you guys to uh, participate with us on the uh, star party tonight. So, um, if you got something that uh, you'd like to uh, let the astronomical world know, okay, uh, just log in on the uh, uh, the page at explorescientific.com forward slash events, you know, buy a ticket, get the download. It's a PDF. It'll give you the, um, uh, the uh, Zoom meeting. It's a waiting room where we're going to stick you in. <laughs> and then Kent's going to oh, check your lighting and your audio and make sure that you're a straight up astronomer, right? And, uh, you know, and that you're not like, uh, you know, using too many adult language words. And, um, and then, uh, you know, and then he will get private message you uh, the broadcast Zoom meeting link. And then you'll, you'll join us on Zoom. I'll find you in the waiting room and then we'll pop you in. OK, so. So anyhow, uh, but Hopefully you uh, won't be stuck in purgatory for too long. <laughs> stuck in purgatory. Exactly. Astronomy, astronomy, uh, the astronomy green room. That's right. Um, so really looking forward to seeing all you guys, everybody that's going to be featured on the show uh, that's watching tonight. Thank you very much. We're going to get uh, all online on Zoom about half an hour early and do audio and video checks like we normally do. And um, um, and that's it. And for right now, I will just say keep looking up and we will see you tonight at 9 p.m. Central uh, here uh, at... Uh, Explore Scientific and all those social media sites. So take care and we'll see you later. Bye bye.